What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video and today I'm going to be bringing you a list of the fastest ways you can find some of the rare materials and in this video I'm going to be going over adhesive, aluminum, ballistic fiber, black titanium, gears, lead, plastic, screws, and springs. Now there is going to be timestamps to every single different material in the description so you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to if you're just looking for a specific item. If a piece of junk has a glitch that you can use to actually get it way quicker I will be showing that but I will also be showing a way to get it legit because not everybody likes doing glitches and they're bound to be patched at some time. But if at any time in this video you guys do go on to enjoy it or find it helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, and let's get right into it. Okay, so the first piece of junk I'm going to be covering is adhesive. Now, I'm going to be going in alphabetic order down this whole list, so you can kind of expect that throughout the video. But let's talk about adhesive. Adhesive can be found in something such as duct tape and glues and vegetable starches like that. But for this technique, we're actually not going to be using any of those. Despite those items being relatively common, the fastest way that I've found to actually get these and actually the most reliable way is actually going out and killing anglers. Now, anglers are looking at all over the map. The spawns can be random, but I do have a few places to show you just in case they don't spawn in the first time. But keep in mind, you can always server hop to actually get the spawn that you want and continue getting the spawn that you want. The place that I'm at right now is the Thunder Mountain Substation TM01, and this place is going to actually have an angler and a gulper there. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a guaranteed spawn. Every time I've gone here, there has always been an angler here, and it's always kind of fighting that gulper too, so if you're looking, kind of get in there and knock them out once they're both low on health, so if you're a lower level, it can make this a little bit easier, but the nice thing about those anglers is they carry a ton of adhesive. Now, you see here, he dropped five adhesive, but I've seen this go up to eight at a time, and the place I'm about to show you have multiple anglers spawn at them. This is the only one that actually has one. This next place is actually my favorite location and probably the most reliable. It's located as far northeast as you can possibly get in the map here. It's located next to Abby's Bunker as well. It's a pretty easy location to find, but there is going to be a sort of swamp looking place here. And you should get some anglers to spawn in up to like three or four at a time I've seen. Now, they are all spawning around here. They can always be hiding. You never know. But if you're lucky, you can also get some glowing ones to get some nuclear material as well. And I think with like two trips here, I had over 42 adhesive, which is absolutely ridiculous. If you want to keep this going, just continue to server hop and load back in and you'll be able to get insane amounts of adhesive. You'll never have to be worried about fixing your melee weapons ever again. Now, the final location I have to show you guys is actually the Treehouse Village. Now, several anglers can spawn here, but it's not guaranteed every time. There can be a variety of different enemies that can spawn here. It can be ghouls, uh, hermit crabs, sloths, it can be whatever. But if you get lucky, you can get the minimus anglers, and whenever you kill them, they're going to be dropping adhesive, like I was saying before. You can get massive amounts of these guys. Now, this isn't all the locations for the anglers. Obviously, these are just my favorites and the ones that I always use. But let's go ahead and get right into the next piece of scrap. All right, so our next item is the aluminum. Now, this is one of the easier ones just because there are a lot of glitches that go with this, but if you want to get it legit, just come to the Pleasant Valley Ski Resort. It's located close to top of the world, but it's overall a pretty good location. A lot of people know about this, but what you got to do is just go over to the ski resort, and there are going to be ski poles here. And what you're going to do is take these, and when you scrap them, there are actually going to be aluminum in these when you scrap them. Now you can also pick up the actual skis themselves. Some of them will carry wood or fiberglass, whatever like that, but we're kind of here for the aluminum. The first place where you can find them is literally right where I just showed you. If you continue down these little stairs here, there's going to be two more locations, one to your right, right here. Um, you can pick up some more ski poles. There can and most likely will be super mutants in this location, so prepare to kind of be ready to fight a little bit. I kind of had to kill them all out before the gameplay just to kind of give you guys a uh, better idea of where everything is. But here's the next location for all the ski poles. You're going to be getting about three to four per one. If you continue down these stairs, there are going to be two more little ski posts that you can actually go and get the uh, poles from. There's going to be one in the very back, right back here, and then there's going to be one right where I kind of passed. I didn't get the best show of it, but it's going to be right to your right, right here. But the nice thing about this place is once you have picked them all up, you can just take them straight to this armor workbench up here and go ahead and scrap them. As you can see, it's going to give me 20 aluminum for that little run I did right there. You continue to server hop and do this as many times as you need to. Now, there actually is a way you can glitch this aluminum, be able to get thousands per hour while you're doing an XP glitch. Um, it's located at the Eastern Regional Penitentiary in this little shed by the entrance. It's a super simple glitch to do, but I'm not going to be showing it in this video just because I've shown that glitch several times before, and I don't want to make this video super longer than it has to be, but I will be putting a link to this glitch in the description. Our next piece of junk is actually going to be ballistic fiber, and it is also going to be the rarest. Now, the way you can get this the fastest is actually just by going from army camp to army camp, go in and loot them for all of their military-grade duct tape and ammo bags. And these are the only two items in the game that ballistic fiber can be found in. 
Here are the locations that I cycle through just because they are the closest and require the least amount of caps and the least amount of actually assets and time to get through. Um, there's just three right really close to each other in Watoga. Now, if you don't want to go all the way down there to those, there is a actual camp located up kind of near Vault 76, but this one is just so common because it's used in several of the missions in your game. So a lot of people have gone to it and when you go there, most of the time it's going to be looted. So it's honestly probably not worth your time. But most of the time you're going to be finding the military grade duct tape and the ammo bags inside of huts that they normally have. They'll have either these like little tent things or these little metal shacks that they always use. These are definitely by far the hardest locations to find, but when you use these most of the time whenever you scrap the ammo bags and the military grade duct tape, you are going to be getting a considerable amount of actual ballistic fiber. Plus you don't really have to use too much ballistic fiber in this game, but it's definitely still one of the rarer things and I definitely get a ton of comments asking for where you can actually find this. Now, for this next piece of junk, we're actually going to be killing two birds with one stone. We're going to be knocking out black titanium and gears at the same time. You can actually do this yourself at the Thunder Mountain substation that is located kind of in Watoga a little bit. It's a really common legendary farming spot. A lot of people know about it. It's really good for farming stem packs as well. But the easiest way to do this that I found if you are a lower level and actually can't take on a death claw by yourself or it's really hard for you, what you can actually do is come here, place your camp, and make sort of a fortified little camp here that has a ton of turrets on it that you can actually use to help support whenever you are fighting this death claw. The death claw is actually going to be located up at this little like power area up here and it can be a different type of death claw every single time. It can be a really powerful, it can be a legendary one, it just depends on how lucky you get. But when he dies and you kill him, you can actually go ahead and pick up the gears and black titanium and this is by far the best way that I've found and just seen overall that you can get gears and black titanium at the same time. Here is just some gameplay on how you can actually kind of lead the Deathclaw back from his like little lair here and bring him out towards your turrets so they can kind of just mow him down. Once you see they like get into his targeting range, his health just absolutely just falls super quickly. Now, he kind of gets distracted on the turrets. You got to make sure that you have them high enough so that he can't actually go and disable them himself. He's going to throw rocks at him, but for the most part, they should be fine. Um, just kind of run around and make sure that you don't get hit and don't get killed. Um, because the turrets will do most of the work and as you can see every time you kill a death claw you're going to be getting about five to six gear and about five to six black titanium every single time all right so the by far best way to actually get lead in this game is by going to the charleston fire department and why this is so helpful is just because um, there is going to be actual gym in here that you can go ahead and scrap all the weights in but it is going to overcome you by like a ton of weight by like hundreds and hundreds so the nice thing about this is there are actually some workbenches in here that you can actually go and scrap those at so you don't actually have to carry those all around because they will certainly overcumber you no matter how big you are. But as you guys can see, there are a ton of weights here. Make sure that you pick up all of the plates that are on the ground as well. It's really easy to miss those. There's ones on the wall. They're all over the place. But once you have picked up all of the dumbbells, the barbells, all the plates and everything and make sure you've got everything, you can head over towards the garage area and there is going to be a ton of different workbenches. You can go ahead and take those two and scrap them and that should prevent you from being over cumbered now there is a glitch to actually get unlimited lead but as for the last one i'm not going to be showing in this video just because i kind of want to try to keep this video as short as possible but you're going to be able to getting lead nuclear material and steel scrap in the process as well it's super easy but i will provide a link in the description right below the first link i said i would provide so the next junk item is plastic. Now, to get plastic, the best place to come to is the Ohio River Adventures location. It's kind of really far west of Vault 76 and south of it. But once you come here, there is going to be this sort of rock bank along the shore of the river. And you will see this little monkey here playing golf. And in his little green pail here, there are going to be a ton of golf balls that you can go ahead and pick up. Now, not only are there golf balls in that little hole there, there should be a little more around him as well as up by the actual um, flag and stuff, there will be more golf balls. So overall, you should get over 20 golf balls here, and each one of those can be scrapped for plastic. The next item I'm going to be covering is screws. Now, this is probably one of the more anticipated ones here. Now, the best place that I've found is by coming to the Tanagra town in the mire and actually going ahead and killing a whole bunch of mega slots. Now, these mega slots are really good because they're going to be dropping about eight screws per time, which is pretty cool. Now, they're not always going to spawn here, which is the bad part. I've never, I haven't found a complete exact location where a mega sloth is going to spawn every single time, but this is the place where they most commonly spawn that I've found. Um, about four times I've came here, three out of the four times it's been a mega sloth. The other time it was a death claw. But even then, I mean, you're still getting useful materials. You're getting gears and black titanium, which is always great. But I mean, you can find these places all over the mire. There's mega sloths all over the place. Just walking through here, I've seen four in one trip just on my way to a location to do a quest. So they're not really the rarest thing 
but they are still kind of hard to find sometimes if you were getting unlucky with their spawns. But even with that, it's still going to be more reliable than just going around your map and trying to find screws because there's really not a set location where you can find a bunch of them. Um, however, when you kill these mega sloths, they are have a really good chance of dropping a very high quantity of screws. All right, everyone, so the final place I have to show you is how you can actually get some springs. Now, you're actually going to want to come to the Dolly Sods Wilderness, like, kind of outpost place. It's located in the mire as well, kind of northern mire. But when you spawn here, when you fast travel directly in front of you, there should be a Yaogai. Now, when you kill him, um, Yaogais do drop springs whenever they die, but they also drop some acid, some other things, too, that could be useful for you. But the, the main thing we're after here is the springs. Now, what's cool about this is not only is there the one here, but there's a chance of having up to like three or four spawn at a time. Um, if you go to your left from spawn two, a lot of times there's one up here. Now, these spawns can also be replaced with anglers sometimes, but for the most part, I've always seen Yagwai here. Um, but it's a cool thing for the anglers too because you can always get that adhesive like I was saying earlier. When you kill these bears, they do drop around five to eight, you know, springs per time. It's pretty good. You're going to get pretty reliable drops on these guys. Both the times when you come here, every now and then you'll come here, there won't be any. But for the most part, every time I've came here, there's going to be at least one. And obviously for all these techniques that I showed you where it has to do with killing enemies, you obviously can just go ahead and server hop to get these and kind of do it over and over again and farm as many as you need to. And that's why I kind of think that's better than going ahead and showing an exact location you can go to that kind of has a set number of things. Um, I definitely think that farming for these by server hopping is definitely the fastest way to go. But that is pretty much all the materials I have to show you today, guys. These are the more of the rarer ones. If you guys enjoy this video and you want to see more, I can always do more of the materials. I just want to do the rare ones because these are kind of the more sought after ones. But if you guys want to know some good locations to get some wood, some steel, some more of the more common items, I can definitely do that. Just go ahead and leave a comment if you do think so as well. But if at any point in this video you did find it helpful or enjoyed it, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.